Sunday, Sunday. WrestleMania 31. Yeah, usually when WrestleMania comes around, you get excited. You, you have this level of anticipation that starts to eat away at you, starts to get at you, and it ultimately crescendos and peaks on Sunday night, and you're really raring to go. I'm not raring to go for this show at all. I have no real positive feelings of goodwill towards the WWE heading into the show on Sunday. I'm sorry, just because maybe some of you want to feel excited about it doesn't mean that I have to. Just because some of you want this to be so much more than it looks like it's going to be heading into it doesn't mean that I need to come out here and fool you and try to lie to you and tell you that it is going to be anything other than what I have about it to be for the past three months now. It's WrestleMania, and it just almost feels like, frankly, a filler pay-per-view. And that's terrible, and that's sad. So here it is, my official WrestleMania 31 preview and prediction show. Are you ready? Yeah. Ain't going to be a lot of fun. It's not going to be a lot of effort put into this because, frankly, the WWE hasn't put a lot of fun or effort into their WrestleMania 31 bill. Henceforth, why should my previews or videos about this topic uh, do anything other than that? So for the fuck sticks that think all I do now is complain, even though that is largely what I do because that's all I'm giving a real reason to do is complain about things, I'm going to start this preview prediction show off positively. I'm going to talk about good things so that way I can try and shine this turd up really nice for some of you and try and hopefully make some of you feel better about this, which is probably what you really are looking for, is a validation for why you're even bothering to watch this fucking show. Well, maybe now, over the next couple of minutes here first with the positives about WrestleMania 31, I can give you reasons for just that. And I'll start off with Hall of Fame night on Saturday. It's going to be a great night. The Macho Man's finally getting his due. I'm sure you're going to have a rousing speech by Kevin Nash. You're going to see Connor the Crusher going. I'm really looking forward to that Hall of Fame ceremony on Saturday night. One of the real highlights of WrestleMania weekend. It is part of the WrestleMania weekend, the WrestleMania event. That is a positive for this show. It could be a positive every year, but it's really a positive for me this year. I also have to look at the card itself, and I look at the potential for some of the matches on there to really deliver, really surprise, and frankly be really good. The IC title ladder match is going to be some big epic spot fest that looks like it's going to get plenty of time. It could be a real show stealer. These type of matches tend to do really well at a WrestleMania, and this one, especially if it's going to kick off the show, the main show, which I would anticipate it would, could do a really good job of starting the night off strongly. Orton versus Rollins could be very good. Uh, Sting versus Tate, 8 Triple H, excuse me, uh, could be very good. In a lot of ways, I think could be surprising in just how good it's going to be because it is going to be that one match where the crowd is really going to react and respond the way they are supposed to. Most everybody's going to be behind Sting and most everybody is going to be behind Triple H. Now, it's not just going to be about the in-ring action itself. It's going to be about the psychology that these two guys use, and it's going to be about the story that they tell and how the crowd gets involved. This could be one of those real big crowd involvement type of matches. Maybe not to a WrestleMania 18 Rock Hogan level, but it could be a very big crowd involvement match nonetheless. And then you look at Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker. Wyatt being a slower, little more methodical type of guy, and the type of story that him and Taker could tell in the ring, that could potentially be a match that ends up pretty good too. So some of the feature matches on this show could end up really delivering. you got to look at this, frankly, from an adult male fan standpoint. Cena's is not main eventing for the second year in a row. That's got to be a positive. It's got to be. Cena's is not main eventing. Score one for us. Uh, you look at this too. This is Sting's first WrestleMania. Kind of a shame he has to be a part of this WrestleMania for his first one. But it's going to be Sting's first WrestleMania, something we thought we maybe would never, ever, ever see. And now we've gotten it. And that's something that really, for me at least, pumps up the excitement level heading into this Sunday show. And then also seeing The Undertaker too. I could talk about the fact that I don't think he serves much of a purpose now that the streak is over. And I stand by that. And I stand by the fact that I really don't want to see Taker anymore, especially wrestling a match at WrestleMania, because again, I don't really see where there's much benefit for anybody involved. I stand behind that. However, it's still The Undertaker. This is still the performer that I respect the most in the entire history of the fucking business. My second favorite wrestler of all time. It's still a big deal to see The Undertaker. And call me hypocrite, call me whatever. 
I know come Sunday when Taker's music hits and he does his entrance that I'm going to feel like a kid again. It's still Taker. And I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to try and spin away from that. I'm not going to bullshit around that. Seeing Taker is still going to be a big fucking deal. And one other positive for the show that we didn't have maybe a few days ago is now the uncertainty of what's going to happen with the main event. There are all types of different options, all types of different angles, all types of different possibilities for the WWE and what they could do with this, what up to this point in time was looking to be one of the potentially worst main events of WrestleMania history. Now there are all types of options and possibilities on the table where at least if nothing else, the one thing you could say about the WWE for that main event with WrestleMania 31 is you might think you know, you might believe you know, but frankly, at this point in time, there are so many different ways they could go. We really don't fucking know where they're going to go with this main event. And that helps. There's no question about it. And the match that needed that help most certainly got it when Brock announced that he's done with MMA and he's resigning with the WWE long term. So now he's here. He's here for the long term. Now what the hell is happening with that main event on Sunday? So there you go. I've given you almost five fucking minutes of positive potential things about WrestleMania 31. So please do not let it be said that the Schleg Daddy just completely and totally shitted all over this show heading into Sunday. However, now that I got this positive crap out of the way, now let me go ahead and shit on this show some. Are you ready to poop all over it? I am. Let's go. <laughs> Let's start off with the bullshit build for WrestleMania 31. It's been bullshit, period. Seriously. You know it is. You know you're not nearly as excited for WrestleMania as you should be. And I don't care if you've got some of the uh, corporate spin doctors like Jim Ross trying to sit there and compare this to the Super Bowl. Like, even if you don't have a dog in the fight, that, 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 that's a bunch of hogwash and bullshit. If you're a fan of the NFL and a fan of a team, pretty much almost every single year... You don't have a dog in the fucking fight. Yet you still get excited for the Super Bowl. And there are certain years you in particular really get excited for the Super Bowl because of the matchup, because of the possibilities, because of the buildup to it. Like Super Bowl 49 between the Seahawks and the Patriots. And even Super Bowl 48 with the Seahawks and the Broncos. I mean, now look at those last two Super Bowls. Those felt like Super Bowls. Those felt like big fucking deals. Those were events that were built up to very, very well. WrestleMania 31 has not been built up to very, very well at all. And anybody that tells you it is must be on the WWE's payroll or a complete fucking idiot, in my opinion. We're talking about WrestleMania, your biggest show of the year, also your longest show of the year. And somehow, some way, in a four-hour show, the WWE can only find the time to have, I think it's seven fucking matches on the card. Seven! That's less than two matches an hour! You bumped the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal to the fucking pre-show? Why? You're going to have multiple performances at WrestleMania 31? Why? You can't find a way to have more than seven matches on a four-hour show? Why? Now, of course, you're going to get the retards and the dumb dicks that are going to come on here and talk to you about the fact, oh, well, you know, that's okay because then that means that the feature matches couldn't have more time and that's awesome. Well, no, it's not. Just because a match can go longer doesn't mean a match should go longer. Just because these matches have more time doesn't mean that they justify having more time, deserve more time, merit more time, need more time, want to have more time. Just because you can have Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns go 35, 40 minutes doesn't mean you fucking should. Just because you can have Sting and Taker go, or Sting and Triple H, excuse me, go a fucking half hour doesn't mean it needs to go any longer than 15 minutes. I know this is going to mean that there's going to be a bunch of big, long, dramatic entrances that are really artistically nice to look at and all of that, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, the WWE still can't figure out a way to effectively manage their fucking time. Seven matches on a four-hour show is completely and totally unacceptable and completely and totally fucking ridiculous. It is complete and total bullshit. And this is one of my concerns with the whole WWE Network crap. Now that they're only charging $9.99 for basically WrestleMania, where are they going to put forth a $9.99 effort? Well, if they're only giving you seven matches in a four-hour show, and they're giving you a bunch of performances by people you don't give a fuck about, not named LL Cool J, then God damn it, they've justified everything that I've ever said in terms of concerns about this, because that's bullshit. That is complete and total bullshit. And while it's great that they found a way to get most everybody involved in WrestleMania in some way, shape, or form, and that's a positive, and that's a good thing, 
At the end of the day, so much of those guys are going to be on the fucking pre-show, the tag title match pre-show, freaking Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal pre-show. What a conjoined, discombobulated clusterfuck. Just a big fuck, period. And speaking of big fucks, what they've done with Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, and Dean Ambrose, putting them all in this IC title ladder match, and not only that, to the point where they're not even the feature performers in that IC title ladder match. You're telling me that Dean Ambrose, who was really, really getting himself over, the best you could find for him was throwing him in as an afterthought in the IC title ladder match, where even the shtick that he had originally was stolen by our truth and others, and then he got overshadowed. And then Dolph Ziggler, the guy... And again, I don't even really like the guy, but fuck, you had him win for Team Cena at Survivor Series. The best you could do is throw him into this match as a fucking afterthought. I would have thought it would at least found a way to give him some type of featured match like he matters or you give a fuck about him. And then Daniel Bryan goes from main event in WrestleMania 30 to probably curtain jerk in WrestleMania 31 in this spot fest that most people are convinced he's going to win, which I'm not even sure of that because you're probably going to have somebody else win it because that's what the WWE likes to do with Daniel Bryan is fuck with you and fuck with him. And fuck that match and fuck the bullshit of what they've done with those guys. They deserve better. They earned better. They merited better. And God damn it, you should expect better. But of course you won't because she's scary, bro. You joined a match for the new issue and your match is going to kick ass. No, it's fucking stupid. And you're fucking stupid if you think that. Just because it's one of your favorites doesn't mean it's always fucking great. How many times have I bashed shit Hogan's been involved with over the years? I bashed an entire stretch of Undertaker's career when he was the American fucking badass. How many times I bash him for signing off on ending the streak of WrestleMania 30? Just because your favorite's involved doesn't mean it's always great. It can fucking suck, and you should be passionate about when it does fucking suck. And if you don't think this fucking sucks, then you're an idiot! Speaking of things that are going to suck, John Cena is going to beat Rusev, but we all know what's coming. Instead of using Rusev's streak as a way to build up a new babyface, you know, maybe somebody like a Ryback and really establish him and give him some real momentum heading into the rest of 2015. It's just building up another guy to feed him to Cena because we need to feed the fucking Cena monster. <laughs> you know, and Sting versus Triple H, well, I think it's going to be good and can really, really be good, and one of the few things I'm really excited about with this WrestleMania, at the end of the day, Ian, you've even heard me almost slip up a couple times and say it, it's not Sting versus The Undertaker. <laughs> you have both of these guys under contract, and even though they're talking about WrestleMania 32, that's all fine and good. But at the end of the day, that's a year from now, and there's nothing guaranteed with that. You have the option, the opportunity to do Sting versus The Undertaker right here, right now, and you don't fucking do it. And then you've got Taker returning for this, and he's just going to return at WrestleMania just out of the blue. And it's not like when he did it 11 years ago, because they even built up to that for a few months. It's not the same. Who knows what we're going to see out of Taker come Sunday. And we've got him returning to face Bray Wyatt. It's a day late and a dollar show with that feud. I'm just saying. There's just a lot of stuff about WrestleMania uh, 31. That's just a bunch of bullshit. And it just looks like it's going to be a bad show. I really don't see, frankly... How so many people could even sit there and argue that this is going to be a solid or even good show unless they strictly are only sucked in by spots and they think that the spot fest of the IC title match and then maybe the quality of, let's say, Orton Rollins and maybe one other match, Brock Lesnar retaining is going to be enough to carry the day for them. Well, it's not. It's still going to fucking suck. So now we've got all that shit out of the way. It's time for some actual predictions when it comes to WrestleMania 31. First, I think Sheamus is returning in that IC title ladder match as the eighth man, and he's going to win the fucking belt to piss you off, to fuck with you, to fuck Daniel Bryan, to piss Daniel Bryan off, and to please gold standard 000. He's going to sit there and think that this is the greatest thing ever because he's a fucking dumbass. And he's going to say, oh, it's yours if Sheamus is returning. He's going to be prestige the IC title off. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Sheamus is coming back. Come on, they gave him all the vignettes. I highly doubt they're going to wait till after WrestleMania. At this point, it looks like he's coming back at Mania. Probably created a spot for him in that IC title match. And they're going to fuck with Daniel Bryan. So they can't even have Daniel Bryan win the IC title. Cena's defeating Rusev. And he's winning the U.S. title. A lot of people will take to social media and bitch about this. Like this wasn't an eventuality. That this wasn't a certainty. That they didn't have weeks, if not months, to prepare for this possibility. And they think that... The bitching is going to change anything, and it's just going to be the same old shit. And you'll have also the idiot spin doctors on the flip side. They're going to talk to you about how this was good and how it didn't hurt Rusev, and Rusev's not going to get buried as a result. <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, Sting versus Triple H could be the match that ultimately owns the night. A lot of people will be sucked into the spots of the IC title ladder match. And to go to make the get awesome. But I really think at the end of the day, it's Sting versus Triple H that is the match that could ultimately captivate the people, grab the people the most, and end up owning the night, frankly. Could end up being the real match of the night, not just the spot fest of the night. I think Taker will beat Bray Wyatt in part because they might be positioning for Sting and Taker having a retirement match at WrestleMania 32. I don't really see where the point of them doing it if they have Taker lose at a second straight WrestleMania. And I don't really see where um, they, they benefit from having Taker lose. And it's just like I don't see where they really frankly benefit from having Taker win. But at this point in time, I, I find it very hard to believe that they're going to have Taker lose at two straight WrestleManias. Could be fool, but I just don't see it coming. I think Rollins loses to Orton on Sunday and then doesn't cash in. He might attempt to cash in, but then it ultimately doesn't happen. I think they should go with him cashing in, and it's possible that it does, but I don't think it will at WrestleMania. Maybe it's a bit of a blowback for Penisgate. Um, I think you're going to officially get a double switch in the main event with Lesnar going full-on babyface, even though he is already the babyface and the top babyface in the company right now. And you'll have Lesnar, or excuse me, Reigns officially turn heel, and they're going to go from there. I think Lesnar will ultimately retain now that they've got him back in the fold long term. A lot of the things that they've positioned seem to point to Lesnar keeping the title long term because they're going to want to wipe Punk out of the record books, I do believe, and this is a way to do it. Furthermore, they want to sit there and justify retaining Lesnar, so having the news of resigning him just to have him lose maybe doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This is going to be a situation where time management is going to be really bad. It's going to suck on this show. The show is going to flow very poorly. There's just going to be too much dead time in between. It's not a show that's going to maintain a lot of momentum throughout because they're going to be splitting up with so much other bullshit that shouldn't be involved with fucking WrestleMania 31. And at the end of the day, I'm sorry, frankly, even with the new uh, uncertainty and unpredictability of the main event, this is going to be a lackluster show. This is going to be a largely forgettable show. What was the whole point of doing all that shit with Lesnar over the past year to build somebody else up just to have Lesnar retain? What was the point of doing all that crap with Rusev just to have Cena end up squashing him? What was the point of having Taker end the streak just to sit there and come back the next year and win at WrestleMania? What's the point of sitting there and throwing guys like Brian and Ambrose and Ziggler into one schmaz of a match where they're not even the feature components and none of them might end up winning the goddamn thing? I'm sorry, at the end of the day, you guys know this. It doesn't feel like a big deal. It doesn't feel like WrestleMania. And I think come Sunday, those feelings are going to be validated. This will be a largely forgettable show. In terms of the quality of the show, it might only be a small step above WrestleMania 27. But at the end of the day, what does that really say? It still means that the show is going to largely suck. For God's sakes, seven matches on a four-hour show. That's not good. The WWE does not have the type of matches on this show that justify having that much time for each. The WWE does not have the skills to be able to manage their time effectively to keep the flow up of the show throughout that four hours with only having seven matches to help carry it. This is going to be bad. This is going to be brutally bad on Sunday. Just don't sit there and say, I didn't try to warn you.